Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Now, I know, like most of you, I had the same response to the announcement of this 3D CG animated feature film of Peanuts. Good grief. And to be fair, we've all been conditioned to resent this sort of thing. Look at all the other stuff from our childhood that's been CG'd up and spit out into theaters. Garfield, the Smurfs, Alvin and the Chipmunks, Mr. Peabody and Sherman. When will it stop? And now they're going after Snoopy and Charlie Brown? No, no, this is an outrage, right? Now, are you ready to have the football yanked away from you? Well, it's time for real talk. The Peanuts movie is a delight. It's a greatest hits primer of everything that was great about the writing of Charles M. Schultz and a great distillation of what we all loved about those animated specials in the first place. True, the settings and some aspects of the character's appearance have been given a CGI facelift, but the characters all move, gesture, and make faces with that familiar hand-scribbled style. In short, this movie works as a perfectly pleasant introduction to the Peanuts gang for those too young to know them already, and as a loving tour for adults through a world where a psychiatric advice is still just a nickel and where you can go through an entire school dance using only two dance moves. That's it. This movie warms the heart, effortlessly entertains, and hits all the nostalgia buttons just right. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. Now, part of why this movie succeeds where some other CG reboots have failed is that it really seems to have its heart in the right place. Written by two descendants of the late Charles M. Schultz, this movie understands what each character's appeal is and does not attempt to evolve them to suit modern audiences. Those other CG reboots that I mentioned, they just feel like cash grabs made by people who don't respect the originals and try to update them for modern audiences. The Peanuts movie, by comparison, feels timeless. There are no smartphones here and no internet. No pop culture references except for a few modern songs, and even those aren't necessarily heard by the characters, they're just part of the soundtrack. For all intents and purposes, ignoring the computer-generated aesthetic of the film, this could be set in the 50s or 60s like the original cartoons. For all we know, it is. And none of these characters have changed or been updated or evolved to fit the modern times. Lucy is still a lovable egomaniac. Pigpen still desperately needs a shower, and Marcy, well, she still suffers in silence from the love that dare not speak its name for Peppermint Patty. Or if she doesn't, it's still just as easy to think that she does. After growing up with those classics and then not having any new adventures for decades, I hadn't realized just how badly I had missed these characters. Well, not Snoopy. I didn't miss Snoopy, you know why? Only by seeing Snoopy back in his crafty action, helping his oblivious master with brilliant ideas and getting into plucky adventures when his bald master wasn't looking, I realized that in the interim, I have seen this character a lot. His name just wasn't Snoopy. I'm looking at you, Gromit. The plot of this movie is so loosely structured it hardly bears mentioning. Lovable loser Charlie Brown gets a crush on the new girl in town, the little red-haired girl. He spends the movie waging a campaign to get her to notice and like him, you know, without actually speaking with her, of course. That would be too much. Come on. He receives advice from his many friends and an assist from his dog Snoopy throughout the course of the movie and ultimately displays enough admirable qualities in the process that he will inspire the children in the audience, whether he catches the eye of the little red-haired girl or not. Oh. And of course, the plot is interrupted often by interludes in which Snoopy imagines himself as a World War I flying ace taking on the Red Baron in dazzling 3D aerial battle sequences. Cause you can't skimp on the flying ace. In fact, the movie makes sure to tick all of the boxes, leaving out none of your favorite gags and referencing everything you ever loved about Charlie Brown cartoons. The adults still talk like a wah 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 wah. 
the muffled trumpet sound. The kids are all voiced by authentic sounding kids. And oddly enough, I'm told that all of the sounds made by Woodstock and Snoopy are all made from existing sound recordings of the original voice artists who voiced those characters for the TV specials. Neat, huh? Lucy pulling away the football, that's in there as an Easter egg. The kite eating tree, the psychiatry booth, the great pumpkin gets a reference. The first verse of the Christmas time is here song. Even entire lines of dialogue from previous specials are lifted and put into play here. This isn't done because of a lack of original ideas. It's done because the creators had such an affection for this stuff and they know that you want to see it here too. And again, for first time visitors to the Peanuts gang, you don't have to walk out explaining the appeal to them. It's all in there. I was charmed completely by this film. It would make a great first movie for the littlest of kids too. It's brightly colored, it's cute, it's packed with wholesome fun. It has the same lo-fi, low-tech, classic feel of the original hand-drawn cartoons, just in a modern 3D CG package. And I'm happy to award the Peanuts movie a large bag of popcorn. This movie is all that and a bag of peanuts. That does it for Movies That Pop. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can see more reviews every week. Click the thumbs up icon if you liked what you saw. In the meantime, I'm the Colonel. Thanks for watching, Bla!